A new poll conducted by USA Today and Suffolk University finds that Donald Trump is actually in a lot of trouble. And no, I'm not referencing the legal trouble that he's in because he is indeed in a lot of legal trouble as well. But politically speaking, he is losing his status quickly as the GOP primary frontrunner. Who is he losing that status to? Well, you guessed it, Ron DeSantis. As USA Today explains, Republican support for Donald Trump's presidential bid in 2024 has cratered an exclusive USA Today Suffolk University poll finds as the former president is beleaguered by midterm losses and courtroom setbacks. By two to one, GOP and GOP-leaning voters now say they want Trump's policies, but a different standard bearer to carry them. While 31% want the former president to run, 61% prefer some other Republican nominee who would continue the policy Trump has pursued. They have a name in mind. Two-thirds of Republicans and those inclined to vote Republican want Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to run for president. By double digits, 56% to 33%, they prefer DeSantis over Trump. Holy shit. So I'm not sure if you can uh, smell that right now, but that is the smell of Donald Trump shitting himself as he reads this poll, because you know he reads the polls, right? He is hyper-focused on polls. So he's going to see this. And will he say that it's a fake poll or will he try to readjust? Can he even readjust at this point? It's hard to say, but one question that's on my mind is for all of these GOP primary voters that they're polling, what policies in particular from Donald Trump are they so enamored with? Because I'd bet that if you ask them, they couldn't name a single fucking policy. These are people who are fixated on the culture war and nothing else. They care about what bathrooms trans children are using and CRT. What policies do they support from Donald Trump? I bet you they wouldn't be able to name any. But what's happening is a bunch of people... Namely, if I'm being frank, the dumbest people in the American electorate are finally waking up and they're leaving one cult leader for another. Now, I, I said before that the health and longevity of U.S. democracy will hinge on whether or not these imbeciles flee Donald Trump and opt for somebody else who isn't as clear and immediate as a danger to democracy. And it does indeed seem to be the case. Now, I'm not going to say that Ron DeSantis isn't dangerous because in a number of ways, I'd argue he's more dangerous than Donald Trump, but he hasn't yet sowed doubts about elections like Donald Trump has, as explicitly and loudly as Donald Trump has. So, in terms of whether or not he tried to steal an election in the brazen way that Trump did, that's yet to be seen, but if he were to actually be president, I do argue that Ron DeSantis would be leagues worse, orders of magnitude worse than Donald Trump, because I think that he doesn't shoot himself in the foot as much as Trump does, and he's more effective at governing, whereas Trump is just kind of a showman. He talks shit and then has other people more smarter than him try to do his dirty work. Um, but it's not just that Donald Trump, getting back to this poll, by the way, is in danger of losing the GOP primary. But in the event he were to face off against Joe Biden, at least currently, Biden would clap his cheeks. Biden would win 47 to 40. That's a seven point difference. That is huge. However, in the event Trump were not in the equation and DeSantis were the one to face off against Joe Biden, well, in that instance, DeSantis wins 47 to 43. So not only is the base turned off by Donald Trump, but now Republican propaganda outlets can make the case, well, look, do you want to lose with Trump or win with DeSantis? This is about electability. Now, previously, based on what I've seen, it doesn't seem as if GOP voters are as receptive to, to the electability argument as Democratic Party voters are, because that was basically make or break. Joe Biden was seen as the more electable candidate in 2020, and voters opted for him over Bernie Sanders, even if politically they agreed with Bernie Sanders and they wanted Medicare for all. So will GOP voters make that calculation? That has yet to be seen. Now, what makes matters especially sad for Donald Trump in a hilarious way is that he announced his uh, 2024 campaign about four weeks ago now. And nobody seemingly cares. Nobody's really talking about it. And so much negative things have happened to him between now 
and the time he announced. Mediaite breaks it down. Just a few days after Trump's campaign launch, Attorney General Merrick Garland announced the appointment of former Hague prosecutor Jack Smith as special counsel to investigate Trump regarding the efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election and the classified documents and other presidential records that were allegedly improperly taken to Mar-a-Lago. Also, Trump's endorsed candidates flopped in the November midterm elections with Herschel Walker's runoff election loss in Georgia, the sour cherry on top of a shit Sunday, depriving the GOP of a much anticipated red wave and fanning the flames of Republican unrest with their titular party head. The Trump organization and the subsidiary company were found guilty of all 17 criminal charges brought by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. And then there was the November 23rd dinner at Mar-a-Lago that Trump hosted with Kanye West and Nick Fuentes as two people who were already notorious for their anti-Semitic comments. West, now legally known as Jay, spent the next few weeks spouting such a fire hose of bigoted nonsense that he was too nuts for conspiracy peddler Alex Jones, and his swastika tweet was too extreme for self-proclaimed free speech champion Elon Musk. In the four weeks since Trump's campaign launch, he's gotten entangled in all that trouble and scandal, but he hasn't had a single campaign event, reported Brett Samuels for The Hill. And that article didn't even mention his call to terminate the U.S. Constitution. So when you take a step back and you see everything that's transpired over the course of the last few months, he's endorsed weak candidates, attacked DeSantis, which the GOP base did not like. Uh, he called to terminate the Constitution. He's not holding campaign events. He's in legal trouble. I mean, at this point, I think it'd be more shocking if he won the GOP primary than lost it, considering everything that's transpired. But it's still within the realm of possibility that he could win. And this is why I think it's stupid to count him out just yet, right? Because in the event we see Ron DeSantis and him on stage, DeSantis can faceplant. I think that even though Ron DeSantis is more savvy and effective at governing as a fascist, he just doesn't have the charisma and the charm that Trump has. But Trump lately hasn't had that spark that made a lot of people love him back in 2015 and 2016. So we don't know what's going to happen. If DeSantis holds his own after that first debate, which we're likely to see over the summer, I think it's over for Trump. But DeSantis is kind of whiny, so I don't know how they're going to fare on that debate stage, I, I, I just don't know. But all things considered now, Trump's support has cratered. We're past the days of him being able to shoot someone in the middle of Fifth Avenue and get away with it. Those days are long gone. He's no longer untouchable. He has scandals that have affected him. And he's kind of also his own worst enemy currently because he just can't shut the fuck up. So I don't know yet if the Trump era is over. But I've said this before, I'll say it again. If we are witnessing the end of the Trump era, this is certainly the beginning of it. Because if he rebounds after this, then it will be a minor miracle. But we'll just have to wait and see. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.